In this video, we're going to have a look at the interpretation of graphs. Before you can start interpreting graphs, you need to ensure that you know the theory of every single function that we had a look at. You need to be able to determine the domain and range of a graph, and you need to know which graphs have axes of symmetry, asymptotes, turning points, and then we can ask you to determine a length or distance, and also points of intersection. Let's go and have a look at an example. In the sketch are the graphs of f, the hyperbola, and g, the straight line. a, b, and c are the respective intercepts with the axes. The first question, determine the length of a, b. When determining a length, you always need to check whether it is a horizontal or vertical distance. a, b, is a horizontal distance, which means that we need the x value at a and the x value at b to be able to determine the distance between. a and b are the x-intercepts of these two graphs, so we now need to go and determine those coordinates. Firstly, to determine the x-intercept of the hyperbola, I'm going to change the y value in the equation to 0 and solve x. This means that the x value of a will be minus 5. Next up, I take the equation of the straight line and also change y to 0. And here x of b will then be equal to 9. So now I can determine the distance between a and b by calculating the difference between 9 and minus 5. And that is 14 units. Question 2. Give the axis of symmetry of f with a positive gradient. This is now an example of the theory that you need to know. You need to know that for a hyperbola, there are two axes of symmetry, and the one with a positive gradient always has a gradient of 1. Next, the two transformations that the hyperbola underwent now also needs to be applied to the axis of symmetry. So firstly, 1 should be subtracted from the x value, and then the q value of plus 1 should be added right at the end. When I simplify this, the equation of the axis of symmetry is y is equal to x. Question 3. Give the domain and range of f. For this, you need to remember that a hyperbola has two asymptotes. The vertical asymptote at x is equal to 1 in this case because we use p with the opposite sign. And a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 1, which is exactly the q value. So for our domain, the hyperbola consists of all the x values, x element of real numbers, but can never be equal to the asymptote of 1. Similarly, for the range, the hyperbola consists of all the y values, but once again, it cannot be equal to the asymptote of 1. Question 4. Determine the coordinates of D and E, the points of intersection of the two graphs. When we ask you to determine points of intersection, we are asking you to solve equations simultaneously. And in this case, the two equations will be the function g and f's equations. Here, the left-hand side of both equations is a y. And because the left-hand sides are already the same, we can take the right-hand side of both our equations and equate them to each other. Now we can solve x. So firstly, I'm going to subtract the 1 on the left-hand side. Next. To get rid of the fraction, I'm going to take the whole left-hand side and multiply it by the denominator of x minus 1. Next up, I can multiply out the brackets on the left-hand side and then get everything to the same side equal to 0. Now we have a trinomial that can be factorized to give us x is equal to 2 or x is equal to 7. So d's x value would be the value of 2 and 7 would be the x value of e. 
Now, these x values can be substituted into either the straight line or hyperbola's equations to calculate the y values. Of course, the straight line's equation will be much easier to use. And once you've substituted, you will see that the y value of point D is 7 and that of point E is 2. So point D will be the coordinate to 7 and E the coordinate 7, 2. In the next video, we're going to have a look at some more questions about these two graphs.